All right, so here's my setup. I've had a bunch of people ask, what am I doing? So I don't know if you've seen my other video that I had, I was testing this out. The pump, I have a power supply, I'm set at 10 amps. I'm not even using 10 amps, it's probably around six right now, six, seven, because I've detuned the pump down to 150 PSI. How do I know that? Well, I've got a gauge right here. This is just for tuning and testing. Um, once it's in the car, I'll actually have electronic pressure sensor in that point and it'll go to my P3 gauge. So I'll know when my pump is either off or if something is blocked by a pressure spike. Um, right now it's set at 150. I have one gallon per hour nozzles from Snow installed here. These are the version two. So they're rated at one gallon per hour per 100 PSI of pressure. That's what they rate them at for version two. Um, I've got it going to uh, basically a three-way down here. It goes off to a manifold. So we got three lines. We got quarter inch going to this manifold and then three sixteenths out. Um, basically just helps with the delay and lag. And then that basically goes to three sensor, um, sorry, three nozzles, which are gonna be fixed like this on the other bank, um, just to give you an exact. And basically inside, you can see we've drilled into it below the intercooler. All right, so I'm just gonna give you a little test as to what this is gonna look like. And this is at 150 PSI. All right. So they're going right into the ports. The blower, yes, is ported, All right? So what we've figured out is each nozzle, so every single one of these one gallon per hour will actually flow at 150 PSI. It's flowing 600 uh, sorry, not 600, 100 milliliters, exactly 100 milliliters. If I boost this pump off, so I tighten the screw that's right here, it will actually bring this up to 280 PSI. This will actually do 125 milliliters uh, per minute, right? So um, what we figured out basically is I can put in six of these and have 600 milliliters per minute or 600 cc's. If I want, I can crank up the pressure in this and I can basically have an additional 25 per, right? Um, I've tested this also with just a six gallon per hour nozzle out of this, just one six gallon per hour nozzle. Um, I have a video on that as well for a four, six, and I think 12, um, you guys can watch that. But basically right now we're gonna have one gallon per hour. I'm gonna set this at 150 uh, for the install. And then if I find this is not enough, I can turn it up. Or if I feel like I want to reduce my intake air temps more, I'm going to install a throttle plate right here with a six gallon per hour. So right now I can't do that because I'm missing a three-way like this. Um, I'll have to get one more so that I can put an additional set nozzle right here. But for the time being, I'm going to wire everything up. I'm actually going to have this on, what I'm thinking is having this on a hop switch so that I can power it up to, ignite, uh, to inject here at the port as soon as I'm in pressure or maybe three PSI. And then I'm gonna use my controller, basically the pump power for the controller is gonna to go to the valves that I have for these, which are actually right here. Okay, they almost look like an, uh, an injector, but they're used for high pressure. So this is gonna go on the rail itself, basically in line like that. And it's gonna allow these to open up. So it's gonna apply power to these and under a PWM so that they will open. And then we'll also have the valve, the open and close valve, basically powered on as well. So I've got one of these. That's going to go for the controller. It's uh, for the uh, nozzle here if I decide to put. So I'm going to wire everything up. That way I can basically edit it later on much more easier versus rewiring everything. But uh, I think this is a pretty cool project the way that I have it set. And I'm hoping to see some results, mainly because I'm injecting after the intercoolers here. The sensor itself is still gonna see that colder air. It, yes, it probably will get soaked, um, but it's also not gonna start pulling timing. It's gonna actually see the temperature of the air that's actually going into the ports. Well, that's what I'm always hoping. Um, versus just injecting here, you cool down the air and the blower is nice and cold, but by the time it gets to the ports, it's completely vaporized. There's no use from that octane. So I wanna try and run it a 50-50. I'll be blending my own stuff with M1 and water. Um, and hopefully by you know going through directly to the port, we're gonna have a nice uh, increase in octane and reduce intake air. So it might get to the point where I don't even need this. It's very possible, um, but 
I'm liking this idea and it looks really cool. Yes, I did have to grind the, there's like a cam girdle on the, on top of the head and they usually have valves there for, uh, was it cylinder delete on other platforms or other engines? Um, on the three liter TFSI, it doesn't use it. So it was just extra material that was there. I did take off the, the cam cover that was there, measured the thickness. It was about 20 to 25 mil uh, thick. I pulled five millimeters out of it. Um, so I'm well with intolerance. I don't think I'm going to have any issue with leakage. I have ran the car uh, right now with the stock blower, the other blower back in place just to see if I'd have any oil leaks and there's nothing. So I had enough material to put to, to grind for these basically to clear um, and I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I could have put the, the it was it the SRM spacers underneath, raised the blower up. Um, I didn't want to do it. I thought this was a really cool idea. And the fact that I wanted to cool down the sensor so the sensor actually sees what I'm injecting versus if I went with the SRMs, yeah, it would increase the octane count. Um, it'll cool the air, but that baby ain't gonna see it, right? So by doing this whole setup, you can actually basically cool it down and not cause the timing to pull. And yeah, I could go and make my own custom tune. I do my own tuning myself as well. Um, I work for Velocity P. I do all the calibration engineering for him. So yeah, I could uh, delete the correction map or zero it out basically so it doesn't pull any timing when this thing gets over 80, but, but why? Like at least this kind of setup, I you know people like O34, IE, anybody running those type of tunes that don't have it zeroed out could run this right versus just putting the throttle, the spacers underneath. They can do a setup like this. And why would I do this? Well, I don't have ethanol, so locally in a lot of areas in Canada, we don't have ethanol. Um, there are some stations. Like for me, I can go and get like E60, claiming that it's E85, but it's E60, so it runs E55, and that's about a two and a half, three hour drive. So it's it's not really uh, beneficial for me. Or I can buy a barrel of it down near the main line, so it's near Vancouver, but that's like a four hour drive. So this is basically more easy for me to do. I can get M1 anywhere, um, and then water, well, that's pretty easy. I can go down to my either pharmacy or uh, auto store, pick up some distilled or whatnot, or bottled water if you don't want to. So yeah, this is basically gonna be installed on the side right here, like this. I might shorten the lines one on each side. I'll have them wrap around to here, go into that three splice and come off. There'll probably be another three splice if I want to put this one, or it's just going to go back to the to the pump. So yeah, show this one more time. Basically, try and get as close as I can. So they're right over the ports. Um, yeah, it's collecting on the back, but when this car is running, it ain't going to collect on the back. It's just going to suck it right in. I did, uh, when I was porting, I kind of like tapered the area so that it can drain down to. So the nozzles are right there. They do look like they're recessed a little bit, but they're not. They're flush. Um, that's probably just some shiny ones on, on that front one you see on the right there. But the rest, they're all flush with the material. There's about five millimeters of material thickness for the case. Some areas were three. So, but this one... I usually have the, you have this little hook that's usually here. I actually had to grind it all down um, and then drill through and then put it in. The other ones I had to take off the material that's, it's hard to see, I'm sorry guys. There's material like this, that's all there right across going right through here. So I had to grind all that out. So I basically just followed the channel itself where the bolt goes and then just ground it right down to the casing. I did leave a little material on the other side so you can basically go in and drill. Yeah, I am using tape, um, but this is for, uh, this is the pink plumber's tape. I tried the E600 stuff, it was okay, but it didn't allow my nozzles to stay in the position I wanted. And even the thread sealant, it was allowing it to break free. So, and when I'm moving, when I put this into position, I do have to clock it a little bit to get it into to the groove that I've set. So I don't want it leaking. And this has just been good for me. When I'm actually putting the tape on, it's not gonna clog the, the jets or anything. I'm being cautious. You know, when you're actually putting it on the nozzle, you don't cover the last thread. You just cover the remaining and you don't get any tape over here. You know, basically don't do it like a farmer. No offense if you are a farmer, you guys do some pretty good shit, but as the expression goes. So yeah, don't put any of that tape over this port here from the, the last thread, just avoid it, just pull it back and you're gonna be good. It's not gonna leak, it's not gonna uh, 
clog anything. You know, it's a big ass rumor online. Use Teflon tape or whatever, uh, what is it, uh, PTFE tape. It's gonna clog stuff. It's just like the old expression goes with the Honda boys that they need back pressure, right? So it's basically an old rumor. If you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna screw shit up and you'll block it. So do it nice and you'll be fine, all right? So yeah, we do have the same setup going on the other side. Let's see if my phone can grab it. So I did the drilling there and you can see the other two here. I did have to install some, um, some inserts, well, threaded coils in some of them, basically because of the angle I was on, it didn't allow for a good bite uh, for the, the tap. So I just drilled it again, put an insert in there, uh, not insert, sorry, a, a coil, threaded coil, and then I put sealant around so it wouldn't leak. So they're in there in some of the ports that I had issues on, so cool. I like it. I'm gonna try and get this installed today if I can. Like I said, I don't have the other three way to make the throttle, but I do have the throttle spacer, right? So basically that's it. I will be swapping. This is gonna go on this side actually, because if I kept it here, it's gonna go like this and it's gonna be in the way of the plate that goes here where the valve, is, uh, the, as this purge basically for fuel. So it's gonna be in the way of this. So we're gonna put it on the inside and run the line that way. So it'll be like this. I could just rotate it, but it just doesn't look right with the piece that's there that was machined. So this is the, was it the iBed spacer as such that I got. So yeah, other nozzle is gonna go here if I need. This one will be blocked. There's already a plug in this one. So I'll just swap it over to here. Um, this is gonna be a six and yeah, it's gonna be cool. So I'll keep you guys posted.